Last year I made a couple of videos about wet processing clay, but in some ways I've misled you because in doing so, I kind of encouraged wet processing of clay. And the truth is, I prefer dry processing of clay. I used to wet process when I was younger, but I have seen the light. So today I'm in the middle of processing a big batch of clay for a workshop I have at the end of this month. So I figured now would be a good time to talk to you about the method I use to dry process clay and also why I think it's superior to wet processing. Specifically, I have four really good reasons why dry processing is better than wet processing. So stay tuned to the end to catch all of those. The first step in dry processing clay is just to grind it up to a powder. Now I use this corn grinder to make short work of my grinding, but you don't have to have a corn grinder. I've talked about before where you can just use a brick or a rock on a patio and crush that clay. In most cases, it's not that hard. Now the texture of your clay may vary. All clays come different. Some clays are like dirt when you dig them out of the ground. Other clays are like rocks and require a little more effort to grind up. Some clays are moist when you dig them out of the ground and they have to be dried out first. All you have to do is spread it out someplace where it's protected from the weather and let it dry. Maybe come back in a week or two and check on it or turn it over if it's still damp on the bottom. So it's easy to dry it out if you dig it wet. The corn grinder makes it real easy because all I have to do is turn this crank and it's not too hard. And if there's any rocks in the clay, generally those just get ground up with the clay and become part of the tempers. A lot of people I know like to use the old fashioned matate and mono, which is what most ancient potters here in the Southwest were using. And it's really not a lot more work than the corn grinder. A matate will usually set you back a good 150 bucks or so. So it's quite a bit more expensive than a corn grinder, but it has the advantage of being traditional. This leads me right into the first advantage of dry processing clay. And that is that it's low effort. I don't have to keep checking on it over time. I don't have to work at it really hard. I don't have a lot of kneading to do like I do with wet processing. The most work I have to do is to turn that crank, which I don't find all that tiring. A little monotonous maybe, but not exhausting. Now I have a bucket full of ground clay. I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is to temper this clay. Most clays need temper added to them. Temper is defined as non-plastic material added to the clay body. All it does is it opens the clay body up a little bit so that it dries more evenly, thus preventing cracking, and it protects against thermal shock in the firing. The clay I'm using today naturally comes with quite a bit of grit in it, and the dry processing method does not remove any of that grit. So that actually allows me to add less temper to my clay. Now for temper, you can use all sorts of things. I like to use sand that I find in my area in dry washes. Sometimes this wash sand can be a little bit coarse. And so there's a couple things I can do. I can run it through a piece of window screen just to remove the larger particles from it. But another thing I like to do is to run it through my corn grinder, which will break up those larger particles into smaller particles. And it will also sharpen the sand. So temper that has sharp edges will naturally make better temper than temper that has rounded edges. So if you look at wash or river sand in a microscope, you will see that they're like river rocks, they're rounded. So running the sand through my grinder kind of breaks it up and gives it sharper edges, which makes it more efficient to use as a temper. The other thing you want as a temper is you want a variety of sizes. You want some that are small sizes and you want some that are larger sizes. So by running that coarser sand through my grinder, I end up with a wide range of sizes in my temper from very, very fine to more coarse temper sizes. This discussion about temper leads me to my next point about why dry processing is superior to wet processing. And that is that dry processing is more efficient. When you wet process clay, you're removing those impurities and discarding them, either by passing it through a screen or through levigation. Then you need to temper your clay. You're actually adding impurities or non-plastic material back into your clay. The dry process makes use of the naturally occurring impurities in your clay as temper. So you're not throwing something away just to be adding something else back in. It's making the maximum use of the material I've collected. When I'm dry processing a batch of clay like I am today, it's undemanding. I can come out here and work for 15 minutes or 20 minutes whenever I have time and then go to work and just leave the stuff set here. If I'm wet processing, I'm kind of tied into that process. So when I'm levigating or straining the clay, I can't just walk away. I kind of have to finish what I started. And when I have that pillowcase full of clay drying, or if I have a little trough of clay sitting drying in the sun, I have to be married to that. I have to check on it constantly. And if I have to go to work in the middle of that process, well, 
come home at lunch and check on it, maybe wrap it up a little bit before I go. It's kind of hard, it's kind of demanding of your time. Dry process, I can walk away at any part during the process and it's not gonna go bad or go sour just because I left. So my third reason why dry processing is superior to wet processing is it's undemanding of my time. Once I've got my temper all sorted out, all I have to do is measure it and mix it with the clay in whatever ratio I'm using. And so here's how I measure out that clay. Just counting as I go, five scoops of clay, one scoop of sand. And then again, five scoops of clay, one scoop of sand. Very easy. And now I just pour it back and forth between two buckets until it's mixed thoroughly. Now, do this outside and be aware that you're not breathing too much of this dust. If it gets too dusty, I'll just walk away until it clears. It's better to do this when there's a little bit of a breeze to carry that dust away. And then, once it's all mixed together and tempered, I can leave it in the bucket and just store it that way, or I could put it in a bin or something in my studio and store it this way indefinitely. Now, with wet clay, you can't really store it indefinitely. Well, you can, but some clays get more firm the longer they're stored, so it takes a lot of work to kind of knead those again and kind of loosen them up. Some methods of storing clay wrapped in plastic or in a bin might let small amounts of air in so that you find over time your clay is getting drier and drier. So you have to check on it once in a while and maybe add some moisture or knead it a few times. So with wet processing, you're kind of processing as much clay as you're gonna be using in the near future. Whereas with dry processing, I can dry process a huge batch of clay and I can store it as long as I want. Nothing's gonna happen to it. It never goes bad. And then when I'm about to be making pottery, maybe the morning of or the day before, I just take out what I'm gonna need. I mix a little water with it, mix it up, and I'm good to go. So that brings me to my fourth and final reason why dry processed clay is superior to wet processed clay. And that is because it's storable. I can just mix up gallons and gallons of this stuff and just store it indefinitely. So the four reasons that dry processing is superior to wet processing are, it's storable, it's low effort, it's efficient, and it's undemanding. Now, if you wanna see that video I made last year about wet processing clay, I'll put that right over here so you can check that out if you wanna compare these two processes. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.